stands as we welcome our brothers Bobby into this church. And at that point, the organist will play for us our opening entrance procession music, which is all things bright and beautiful at that point we stand. But I'll, I'll indicate that in a few moments. So let's just spend the next few moments just in prayer as we pray as you meet, commend him to God's care. And we think of the many memories that we have of Jimmy. I know I have many we shall share with you later in our celebration. I invite you now to stand please and welcome to the church and the audience will now pray for us all things right and beautiful. I invite you all now to be seated, please. It's very relaxed here today. You're all very welcome to our celebration. And what I'm going to do now is invite Calvin to come forward to share with us in a very special way about Jimmy's life. And I'm very pleased that the family are doing this because they knew a lot more about Jimmy. I mean, they've saw him in the last 20 odd years, and they've known him all their lifetime. So, you have to come forward now. You use this microphone here. You can remove the mask when you get into that. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Kelvin and have had the privilege of calling in my father-in-law and friend for almost 30 years. And I want to start by offering my sincere condolences to you and thank you for coming today to celebrate the life of Jim in the way that he would have wanted. So the two most important things to Jim were his faith and his family, especially the little one. Jim was a devout Catholic all his life, from being a proud post boy in Prescott to attending the Holy Mass every week of his life for many years. Many of that, not for that, but since Austin's, until the pandemic changed things. So, Jim's faith underpinned everything he did, and the first thing he would do when he arrived on holiday would be to find the local Catholic Church and the Tether Times for Mass. He also enjoyed taking his grandchildren's midnight mass on Christmas Eve. They didn't all enjoy it except one who refused as he didn't fancy <coughs> midnight mass. Not mass, <laughs> but didn't know. So Father Martin was given his priest for many years and we're grateful that he is leading to the funeral mass with us today. So, sadly, Jim never had any children of his own, but that didn't prevent him from being a fantastic stepdad and a loving and very involved, kind granddad and great granddad to his children, an uncle and great uncle to his sister, Dessa's children. 
everybody who met Jim, liked him, and everybody described him as a lovely man. Jim married Rita in 1966 after a long courtship and they were happily married for over 40 years until Rita passed away in 2008. They loved their big extended family and they loved the pets, Kim, Heidi and George. Jim and Rita are regulars at St Austin's Club. Every weekend for many years are usually accompanied by a group of friends and family. They enjoyed many times of music, and Jim liked the Miller, the Big Band Sam, Teddies, and others. They enjoyed the dance, and after a drink or two, they were always pleasant and kind after a few. They enjoyed travel, often with a group of friends at places like New York, Ibiza, Italy, and they both enjoyed long holidays in South Africa with Rita's brother and uh, Sue's uncle Wallen family. In later years, Jim enjoyed Far East cruise with uh, Nim Sanu and uh, again holidays to Canada to see Paul and his family. And we also had a meet just me and Jim at a trip to Rome and uh, we had uh, an audience with the Pope. Uh, it wasn't you know, just one to one, it was a huge crowd, but it was a, a, a fantastic. Uh, an amazing atmosphere. It was unbelievable. Besides. And uh, Jim also got to enjoy the opening and the new Saints round with Neil. So after Jim passed away, Jim lived with himself and uh, Sue for eight years before moving to St. Helens Rock at St. Helens Hall, where care staff became his friends and treated him like family. He enjoyed a good crack with many of them, and I would like to say a big thank you to you all from, uh, from us and to those who come, came today and cared so much and looked after them so well. So, to us here today, Jim was a wonderful stepdad, granddad, uncle, and friend. He was the best. But that said, he did have his quirks. I knew the family dog and grandchildren weren't allowed to sit on the camp here and uh, so bad because I didn't like it. It was usually Andrea who was told she would have to sit on the floor. Uh, and the same thing, the dog used to uh, manage the television uh, because if uh, animals, pets, dogs came on, she'd bark and so they'd spend the evening switching uh, television channels. And as a result, the telly was always on, but we never got to watch a complete program. We often wondered if they realised what was happening. And Jim used to take Heidi for a walk, and when I say a walk, it was more of a carrier. But only across the road to Plateau Bay, which was not very far away, but most of it she was carried because she only had a few legs. Jim always made sure that Sue had an ice cream from each of the babies and a holiday each year as a child to put things on the Isle of Man and he looked after Sue's mum and Rita as well as the rest of us always. As a granddad uh, an uncle Jim was by far the best of He was in his element when he had, and he had the patience of a saint. When he was nursing and cuddling the babies for hours on end and giving uh, a good tickle to his own bum 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 version of something that man was sucking his head while the baby slowed sleep. So whether it was queuing his arm dogs to make sure they got a Christmas present they helped the dream dog, or whether it was walking in the rain to get them some skill or find the right punch out for the bikes, whether it was looking after the naughty ones who had come home from school, not many names, whether it was buying them jelly tops or Cabinet's Christmas buttons every weekend. And whether it's worth taking them to watch stage, and over the road, or giving Joanne money, uh, and watching across the road by nuts and apples and appletons, or treating them to an Andrew for a comic from the paper shop. So, the other thing I need to mention is the money boxes. And when I say money boxes, these were jars, jam jars, or whatever. And Jim had 15 grandchildren, 13 great grandchildren, as well as four nephews and their children. Loved you all. 
Years ago, Jim and Reese started putting 30 pence a week in the money boxes, jars, to start with, and then it went up to a pound a week. And then the number of jam jars started to grow and grow. Uh, but he, he kept that up till probably maybe 18 months ago, two years ago. Um, so as our family grew, Jim welcomed the new member with joy and a huge grin on his face, and they were all getting their money box and uh, treated at Christmas. Jim, in his lovely, kind way, made our lives better, and we will carry on. We will carry special memories of what he did for us in our hearts. We all have many personal and happy memories of Jim, and a good going on and on. We will never forget you, Jim. We'll always love you. Thank you for being so, so lovely. Rest in peace together forever. Thank you. Thank you for those memories because it sets the scene of why we are here today. And the first thing I do as a parish priest here is to welcome Jim's body into this church. The church which so often he came to pray, and so often he came to Mass here. Because he was so involved in his life. But remember, we go back to the beginning of Jim's life. In baptism, he became a son of God. So what I do now is sprinkle his coffin with holy water and the mind of the Baptist to be began that journey with the Lord. In the waters of baptism, our brother Jim died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Normally at this point we would place Christian symbols upon our brother's coffin. But what we've done instead is this display here, which flows in a sense from the, the holy water font. And what we have is a book of God's Word, the Bible. Because in life our brother Jim cherished the gospel of Christ. May Christ now greet him with these words of eternal life. Come, blessed of my father. And again, the crucifix, one also is on his coffin already. In baptism, our brother Jim received the sign of the cross. May now share in Christ's victory over sin and death. We come together as family, but first and foremost, not just as Jim's family, but as God's family as well. And we come together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your you. spirit. As again, welcome. Jim was very much a character. And I'll speak more about him later on in our homily. But one of the things that all of us recognise, no matter what Christian denomination we belong to, or our tradition, is that when we come into a church, we recognize God's love and grace. But all of us at times are not perfect. All of us at times turn from God's love and sin. So let us now seek the Lord's forgiveness, for he's full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, 
and bring us to everlasting life. As we pray, we only pray for Jim today, but we think of Sue and all the family here today, and also those eventually who will watch this in Canada. So let us pray for Jim and Father. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant and brother Jim, who has gone to his rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this from our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Dave is now going to read for us our reading psalm. Dave is actually training to become what we call the deacon and be ordained in the next uh, two weeks. So Dave will lead us in our readings today. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, heard a voice from heaven say to me, write down, happy are those who die in the Lord, happy indeed. The Spirit says, now they can rest forever after the work, since their good deeds go with them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to the psalm is, the Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valleys of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these you give me comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, and there is nothing I shall want. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil, my cup is overflowing. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Surely goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Please stand as we read the gospel. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is my Father's will, says the Lord. That whoever believes in the Son shall have eternal life, and that I shall raise him up on the last day. Hallelujah. For the Lord be on my heart and on my lips, and my word will proclaim his most holy gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared your place, I shall return to take you with me. Where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Let's all be seated, please, for a few moments. Again, you're welcome here to this 
celebration of this Mass for our brother Jimmy. As we think of Jimmy today, we think of him with great affection. And as Calvin rightly put it, you know, we all have fond memories of him. My memory so often of Jim was actually I could hear him in church before he was actually coming in because he'd be talking in the back and because of his hearing impairment sometimes. I say, oh Jimmy's alive, you know. You know that straight away. But there was in a sense a gentleness about him. A gentleness and a sense of peace. He was content. No matter what was thrown at him, and I don't mean physically, I mean in the sense of you know, uh, different things, whether it was eyesight going on, hearing getting worse, or his mobility problems. And you know, he just, he just put fine, okay, we'll get on with it. And the beauty was that he moved from the back to eventually the side here, not far from where Ben is building today, the next Ben shop. He used to sit there. And he'd come quite early and pray in this church. And because that's near the confessional, some people would come and say, You waited for the confession, oh no, I'm not. You, you better get in there, he said, you know, some different people who and you could see way way past. And sometimes he said to me, You didn't get many customers tonight, did you? Or well that was Jim, Jimmy. But the beauty for me is each celebration of a funeral is unique. It's unique as the fingerprints at the end of our, of our hands, our, our fingers. And Jim was unique. He did have that gentleness about him. And the lovely thing is for me is that the way in which the family, particularly so, you know, send her an email in the back of the room and try to show them this and this and this, and in particular that one's done and organised and they didn't bother because it's all in place. And what that is in the sense of, because we knew Jim, we knew him through and through, we thought this is a very important day in the life of this community. Because it's an opportunity for us to say thank you to God for his life and for his commitment. Not only here, but also in the community for which he was part so often in Prescott. And it's the place that so often he was both born in and grew up. And the witness to that is the lovely picture of being an officer in our booklet today. Not change one bit here. That lovely smile that he had so often. But as we come in faith, we first of all reflect upon the word of God. That word of God is eternal. That word of God is there to be in a sense a signpost to guide us along the way of life. And yet, we think of Jimmy today, we think of him with great affection and love. But that word of God speaks to us, even though it's only a few lines of scripture for our first reading of the day proclaimed for us today from the book of the Apocalypse, or the book of Revelation, as it's called. And I think that reading is, is very appropriate. I, John, heard a voice from heaven to say to me, Write down, happy those who die in the Lord. Well, Jim was content. Jim was happy in the Lord. And he always greeted whenever I visited him in the watch, in the hall there, he always had a smile. And my memory, the last time I saw him was just a few weeks before he died, I was able to get in and to anoint him. And then knelt there in the dining room. He says, Come on, Father, I'll, I'll take you down to my room. I said, No, Jim, we can stay here. Well, that's good, he said. The pudding just being served, he said. Yeah. He loved his food as well. So I knelt there and prayed with him. And anointed him. Little did I know that a few weeks later, the Lord would invite him 
to be in the sense on that eternal journey with the Lord and welcome him home to heaven. Because that is, in a sense, sums up our first reading from the book of the Apocalypse. Now they can rest forever after their work, since their good deeds go with them. And as Calvin was speaking, and I thought you probably, you, you actually, if you ever want a job doing preaching, you, you, you can do that, no problem. But it's beautiful in the sense of how all that was woven together, and throughout it was Jim's generosity and his love. And that gentleness as well. And that comes in again in our scriptures, which we heard proclaimed by day today. The image of the shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. And it seems appropriate that I've actually put an icon of the good shepherd there. And that's to do with the, the story of the lost sheep that Jesus is embracing as a chief shepherd in the sense of the story of the lost sheep. But he is also is a good shepherd who cares for his flock. And the Lord was the true shepherd for Jim, our brother. And now he's being led to new pastures where he can be at rest from all his labours, all those worries that he had. And probably his worries probably for the last 18 months was what time was mass and when can I get back to church. He even said that to me when I went to anoint him. When are we open again? He said, we're open. He said, but when can I get out? I said, well, you know, not yet. He said, the lockdown for the on us. But that was lovely in the sense that he, he, in his own way, kept his own faith going with his prayers, but also in the sense of his love. And the lovely thing today, I, I complimented Sam. Today, as he came from the care that they gave when they chatted to them outside, because he loved every one of you. And the lovely thing is, he loved him. He was what I would call a cutie. He was lovely. He was everyone's. I mean, I would want to adopt him as my own grandfather. You know, I want to take him home. And many a time I helped escort him in. Now are you found fine. I said, You're lovely, you. Remember? Yeah, But that was Jim, that was who he was, and in a sense, it's appropriate that we bring him home here today to the church where so often he worshipped and prayed. And again, with our psalm, you know, that whole idea of goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life. Well, Jim himself summed up goodness and kindness because it was reciprocal. He showed that goodness to others because God had blessed him with Rita and the family that he had. And that kindness he showed was reciprocated because God had shown him kindness. And Rita and the family had shown him great kindness as well. But the final line of our psalm Reminds us in the sense of the eternal home prepared for us. In the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. Jim, today, unfortunately, we can't keep you here on earth. But there's a dwelling place prepared for you in heaven. And where do we get that idea from? Well, we get it particularly from the Gospels. And Sue and the family picked this particular gospel passage today, which I proclaim. And it's probably over the last few weeks, there have been, in a sense, you know, various worries and anxieties, you know. And as that first line of the gospel says, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. There's a place for Jim, our brother, today. Prepared for him by the Lord. 
And Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. And Jim recognised that. No matter where he was in the world, as Calvin said, first thing would be, he'd ask at the desk, you know, uh, where's the nearest Catholic church and what time's mass? Or when's the church open? You know, I wouldn't be saying like, oh, well, you know, are we going on a trip you know, like tomorrow or are we going out here? No, I'm going to go to mass first. That was his priority in mine. And I love that in a sense you knew exactly where you were with Jim. He didn't actually, you know, dress anything up. You know, he said, well, I want this. You know, not in a selfish sense. Not in a challenging sense. He just said he was a priority. And that was a priority for him. And I thank God today in our celebration of the Mass. The word Mass, depending on which tradition you belong to, could be replaced with the word Eucharist. And Eucharist literally means Thanksgiving. And that is why we're here today. We're here to give thanks to God for the life of our brother. And as we do so, we think of how Calvin set the scene with all those memories that you, you part and you've got. Whether it's the jam jars or the money or the presents. Or somebody being naughty, I don't know which one. He didn't need Calvin to out of the back of the school or whatever. But Jim was there for all those occasions to help, to guide, to support, but to love. He had such a big heart, and that heart, in a sense, was broken after the death of Rita, his wife. But he carried on. He carried on for many, many years, eight years. And as we come here today, we think of his early part of his life, you know, Calvin spoke about a lot of the things that went on in Jim's life. But also I asked Sue to write a little bit more so we could focus on two different angles. One from family members, another one from the historical point of view. So I'd like to, to share this brief history about Jim's life or give him his full Sunday title. James Bernard Orford. He was brought in Prescott in 1926 and lived with his family until he married in 1966. As we all are aware, he was a practicing Catholic and attended church here every Saturday or Sunday without fail until the recent pandemic and lockdown prevented him going. He served his time as a panel beater and worked in his trade for a number of local characters, including Lyon and Pye, Ashworths and Penningtons. He joined the army during the latter part of World War II in 1944, when he was 18, and he served in Northern, in Northern Ireland was part of the relieving forces that took over as well from the Japanese in Singapore. Jim's trade in the army was coppersmith, and on his discharge with these papers, his military conduct was said to be very good. In 2009, he visited Singapore while on a cruise and said baffles and the rest of Singapore had changed since he'd been there in 1945, which only happened to be 52 years later. He was discharged from the army in 1948 and returned to his previous trade in St. Helens. As we all know and are aware of, he married Rita in October 1966 and became stepdad to Sue and granddad to Sue's children. He was happily married until Saturday Rita died in 2008. He retired in his 50s after an illness and worked part-time after that. He was fitted with a pacemaker in 2009, which gave him a new lease of life. We actually saw the difference here in church. 
before it'd be quite slow and then suddenly his pace suddenly you know, as if you'd wind the clock up on him and you suddenly start to going and doing all the things you love all the place. You know. um, his sight deteriorated in his eighties and was registered blind, although he could see a little. I know that but quite often I've given him a newsletter. I don't I can't see that. He's bigger than a bigger one if he's squinting like this, you know. But anyhow, that was Jim. Jim stayed on his own for a year, so after Rita had passed away, and then moved in with Sue and Calvin for about eight years. During this time, he came to Canada twice to visit his grandson and great grandchildren. Jim also came on Far East cruises with Sue and Calvin, especially enjoying already Singapore's mentioned. Even on holiday, Jim would look for Catholic Church to attend some mass. As I already mentioned, Calvin, uh, he went to Rome in December 2011, for a week with Calvin, and they had the audience with the Pope, which was a great experience for him. Sadly, it came to a point when it was felt that Jim's needs would be better met in the care home, and he moved into St. Helens Hall in Elephant Lane. 2016. He was well looked after in St. Helens Hall, particularly enjoying the company and the social aspect. He was unhappy during the coronavirus lockdown and was unable to, to attend church. We did not see him for almost a year. Then they allowed window visits, then managed interval visits. During April 2020, Jim got COVID-19. But as we all know, he's made of sterner stuff than he recovered, okay? But he started to feel his age afterwards. The most important thing in Jim's life, which we're all very aware of, is his faith and his family. His nieces, his grandchildren, brought a particular pleasure in doing things for them and spending time with them. Jim was taken into hospital on the Monday and was diagnosed with pneumonia and sadly passed away on the Friday. We all have personal memories of Jim. Some of the stewards here today used to visit him in St. Helens Hall. I've not met one person who can say a bad thing about you. Every single one of them has said he was lovely, he was cute. You know, he's one of those, like I said already, we want to adopt him as a grandfather. So my prayers today in the celebration of this Mass for Jim, our brother, a prayers thanks. Thanks for his friendship. Thanks for his generosity and support. But most of all, thank you for his commitment to the Lord. And it's not very often I use this term exactly. Beautiful image of God's faithful servant. And last night when I was reading over this and reading over the readings, I was thinking of someone who I could compare Jim to from the scripture or a particular saint. And two came to mind. One was St. Francis of Assisi, the patron saint of animals, and loved animals and things like this. And that gentleness about him. And the other one is Simeon, the story of Jesus being presented in the temple. And Simeon said this particular prayer as he greeted Mary and Joseph in the temple as they, present, as they presented the child of Jesus. A master, all powerful master, you can let your servants go in peace. For my eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared for us. The light to enlighten the Gentiles and give glory to your people, Israel. That's a prayer for Jim, our brother, today. A prayer of thanks to God for the way in which he is an example to all of us of God's love and grace. As St. Paul tells us often in the scriptures, 
It is which has sorts of these that we comfort one another. Let's just have a few moments where we reflect on what we've heard. And in our hearts, let us give thanks to God for the life of our We sat down for our bidding first. Let us call trustingly upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ the Son from the dead, for the salvation of the living and the dead. For Jim, our brother, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, we may now be admitted to the company of the saints in heaven. Our invitation to praise, this is our prayer. And we respond, we pray to the Lord. This is our prayer. We pray to the Lord. For our brother Jimmy, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of eternal life, we may now be admitted and be raised up on the last day. This is our prayer. Amen. For our deceased relatives and friends of all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. This is our prayer. Yeah, For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. This is our prayer. We pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of our brother Jimmy, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept to the death of his friend Matthias. This is our prayer. We pray to the Lord. For all of us assembled here, to worship in faith, that they may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. This is our prayer. We pray to the Lord. We turn to Mary, our mother, and commend to her divine Son, the soul of our brother Jimmy, as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for sinners now, and in the hour of our death. Lord Jesus Christ, hear our prayers for our brother, and for all who have gone before us in faith to eternal life. Free them from all their sins, and let them share in the fullness of salvation in the kingdom, where you are Lord, for ever and ever. Amen. And let us be seated now to prepare our gifts. What we do now is we do exactly what the Lord has asked us to do, to present these gifts of bread and wine, and then we help them in Jesus' body and blood. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for the openness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, that we count for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for the openness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, that have become our spiritual gift. Let us stand and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice is yours. May be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The praise and glory of his name, Father of the good of all his holy church. Lord, as we offer you our sacrifice, we plead for the salvation of your servant, our brother Jimmy. We firmly believe in your son, Vinny God. Grant that he may find in the merciful judge who lives and reigns for heaven. The Lord be with you. And the Lord be with you. Let's Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation 
or wings and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, the Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, in Christ's Son. In Him, the hope of the blessed resurrection is dawned, for those sapped by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Since for your faithful Lord life is changed, not ended, and when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them. And so with angels, archangels, and thrones, and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing to him in your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of us. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You have to sit on the other end during the Eucharistic. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you are created, mighty as you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give right to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration. The day may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he gave you the bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. So the way the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he sent the blessing. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which you be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we will proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Lord, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize it in sacrificial victory by whose death and will to reconcile us to your Son. Rather, we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, we become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain inheritance with your right, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with Saint Austin, Saint John the Anne, Saint Teresa of Villa, Saint Monica, Saint James, Saint Bernard, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we lie in your daily life. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray all for, and God's the peace and salvation of all for. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis our Pope. Malcolm, our Archbishop, his assistant Bishop Tom, his assistant elect Bishop Tom, the order of bishops, and all priests and deacons, and the entire people you have gained from your rule. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Jim, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like this may also be one with him in his resurrection. And from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who are alive and transform our lowly body after the path of his own glorious Lord. For our departed brothers and sisters too, 
a dull or pleasing to you are that I sing from this land. We kind of think it's your kingdom. Though we hope to enjoy the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all ages and praise you without end. In Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through heaven, with heaven, and heaven, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So let's stand now as we come together as God's family. In the same as we have been performed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debtors, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us all, we pray, from every evil, gracing and peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grace they grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Nor at this point in our celebration we'll be able to shake hands with the person next to us. We can't do that at the moment because of COVID. But what we do here. We're a deaf friendly church, and so we give each other sign of peace in sign language. Very easy. Peace be with you. You can do that to the person or across the church if you wish. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace. It's a great way to get the message across for peace in our world. And so we pray, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Would you like to sit on the end during the priest communion? Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter the mind of me. But only said a word. My soul shall be here. The body and blood of Christ through us all for the last man. We are now to come. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. What we do now is we, in a very formal way, pray for Jim, our brother, that we commend him to God's care. And we also use holy water, reminded that in baptism, Jim became the Son of God. We may see you for this prayer, if you wish. Trusting in God, we are praying together for our brother Jim. And now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see our brother Jim again and enjoy his friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let's console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. In 
Jan, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Jim to your care this day. We now sprinkle his body with holy water and remind him that in baptism he became the Son of Let us pray. To you, O oh Lord, we commend the soul of our brother Jim, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he committed in your human weakness, and in your goodness, grant an everlasting peace. We also give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed upon our brother Jim in this life. They are signs of your goodness of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith, until we all meet in Christ. And now with you and our brother Jim from heaven, we ask this through Christ our Lord. What we do now is the Jim body will be taken from this church. We will all remain in the church except the bearers, and then the bearers come back in for our final part of our celebration, with our final prayer and blessing and communion. But during this time, as a sign of respect, we stand as we take the Jim body from this church, and the organist will play for us. Morning is broken, which is actually an Easter hymn. It's like as if we're in the garden with the Lord. On that Easter day. And that, in many ways, sums up the journey that Jim has made and shares the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So let's stand now. And if the bird would like to go forward to assist the undertakers, and then we will listen to the oldest place with them morning. <laughs>
Let's just remain seated for the final prayer and blessing. Lord God, your Son gave us the sacrament of his body to support us in our last journey. Grant that our brother Jim may take his seat with Christ at his eternal banquet, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace and joy of Christ. Thanks be to God. Just do a couple of announcements then. Because of the COVID regulation, that's why we're going to be communing this way. But today for our celebration, we don't want anyone to be left out of this celebration for Jim, our brother. So for those who are able to come forward and belong to the Catholic tradition, you can be welcome to come for communion. For those who wish to receive communion and have them in the Catholic community, just come forward, place your hands out like so. The host will place your hands as usual, you then step to the side to the event and you the face covering. Soon the host, and we can make our way out. For those who are unable to receive communion this time, belong to the denominations of the faiths, and please feel free to come forward and place your hand across your chest like so, and then I'll know that you wish to receive the blessing. And there may be those who don't want to receive communion or a blessing, and again, just let them come past and just bow and make your way out again. And we often go out the same way, so as you leave, you benches today will be guided out by the stewards who will come forward now and they'll guide us on our way as we leave today. We've got plenty of time, I'd say we'll do about 15 minutes outside the church or so and then uh, the undertaker will then direct us down to the Fox and Bank Cemetery and we'll again we'll have some time to pray together as a family in the gym as we commend them to God's care and this the organist will play for us during our communion time there in a moment. He play for us some music, which will be the Ave Maria. I'd say play at least twice, Alex. Okay, at least. I'll get geared up for distribution of communion. I'm going to say thank you to all for your presence here today, and also those joining us uh, by the filming today. We will eventually see this in Canada. And God bless you all. So we only need to move once the stewards are back right row by row. We'll come out this way, round the front, see if you've been a blessing, and then make your way out to the side door and again with the opportunity for someone to put their hand at the jail on them. So I'll need to be back to play them and play them. 